welcome to the Nobody Asked Me Guy show. Listen, we are so excited that you're here with us this, this afternoon. We have one of the world-renowned parenting individuals. I'll call him the parenting guru, Dr. Kirby oh, Alvey. Oh, Dr. Alvey is the founder and executive director of Center for the Improvement of Child Caring. Now, all of us know exactly what that means. So no one uh, needs to insult you by explaining what exactly what that means. And we all love children and, and, and we all want to be the quintessential parent. Well, this evening, guys, we have the quintessential guru that will be sharing with you insights, outsights, all of the things that, that, that go with parenting, things that we need to look for, et cetera, in the person of Dr. Kirby Alvey. And you guys know that, that have been with me many times. We always like to give our guest the opportunity to share more about themselves with you because as i say on many of my shows you know resumes or or great but when you have the person why not let the person share themselves now sitting next to dr alby is sharon benson and uh, dr alby has already alby has already shared uh, with me in earlier conversation that sharon has been uh, working with him very diligently the past four years having to prepare information and get things ready uh, with, with CICC. So uh, you guys will, will hear from her as well. But as all of us know, Dr. Kirby Alvey is the man of the hour. Here, here. We're going to listen, we're going to engage, and we're going to welcome to the Nobody Asked Me Guy show, Dr. Kirby Alvey. Dr. Alvey, welcome and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm the person who created the Center for the Improvement of Child Caring 45 years ago to help parents do the best thing possible in raising kids. And through those years, we started off with, I mean, parenting. What is parenting? Well, it's maybe the most difficult job we ever have, maybe next to president. But for the most of us, being a parent is a very difficult, difficult job. And uh, it's the process of raising the children. And when you look closely at what's involved in raising kids, there are at least five major responsibilities that we as parents have. One of them is we provide resources to maintain a family and a home. Resource provision. That's a big, big responsibility for us parents. It, it, it sets the stage for everything. And then we're also involved in caring for the home, taking care of the home itself, shopping, doing everything. And then a, a biggie is protecting children. We're the ones who are responsible for protecting our children from various types of harms that are likely to uh, come before them. A big, another big component of our uh, responsibilities is what we call the psychological and physical caregiving of kids, how we communicate with them, how we nurture them, how we discipline them. That's a, a big, big area, the psychological and physical caregiving. And then finally, we're very much involved in advocating for our children in the home, in the family, in the community, we're very big advocates and we're always inter connecting our kids to health professionals, to the family. So those are the f five major functions or responsibilities of us as parents. And it is a big job. Now, when you start to ask, well, what, what you, how do you, how, what is effective parenting? You could define effective parenting by going through each of the responsibilities, effective resource provision, effective protecting children. The one type of the one area that there's already been a lot of research in is the psychological and physical caregiving of kids, how we nurture, discipline and communicate with children. And there's been a good deal of research that has t turned out that there is a pattern of parenting that has been shown to be extremely helpful in raising competent children. And I'll give you what that is. The one component, the first component, and this is a universal component, is to convey a great deal of warmth and acceptance of children. 
letting them know they're wonderful and that we uh, uh, love their uh, abilities. We love the way they look. We cherish children. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, demonstrating a great deal of warmth and acceptance. And then a second component of effective parenting is, is that we display sensitivity to their needs and points of view. We keep their needs and points of view. We're very sensitive to that in how we relate to kids. And then we use firm and fair disciplinary tactics to help the kids be more cooperative. Then there's we, we have to make age appropriate demands for kids to be mature based on, you know, a three-year-old is can only have so much age, you know, maturity, but a 12-year-old has, uh, we can have more uh, requests for mature behavior. And finally, the, the last component of effective parenting is that we make children a priority in our lives. They become a priority. Now, these five characteristics of effective parenting, conveying a great deal of warmth and acceptance, displaying sensitivity, using firm and fair disciplinary, making age appropriate demands, and making kids a priority in our lives. The research has shown that parents who approach their kids in that way, the kids turn out a certain way. And here are the characteristics that the research has said comes from using this effective or balanced parenting approach. Kids turn out to be independent, highly competent in social and academic pursuits. They become socially responsible people. They're able to control aggression. They feel self-confident. They're popular with peers and others, and they have high self-esteem. So if you want to do things and have science on your side, you want to rear your kids using this pattern and your kids are likely to come out with these characteristics. Now, what we've done with that research is we've designed programs that are based on that definition of effective parenting. And we've designed three separate parenting programs. One of them is called Confident Parenting, Survival Skill Training, and that's a program that's for all parents, okay, regardless of culture or ethnicity or background. It's for all parents, Confident Parenting. Then we have two programs that are designed for parents of color. We have the Effective Black Parenting Program, and you know this one rather well. <laughs> because you've been trained in it and you've been one of the great advocates for this program, Melvin. Yes, well, we thank really you. Appreciate, we really appreciate that. And Effective Black Parenting also comes with a book called The Soulful Parent. Okay. So there's, a, you know, there's another aspect with a soulful parent raising a healthy and successful African-American kids. Oh, back on confident parenting, in addition to the, um, to the confident parenting program, there's also a video that's really neat and it because it demonstrates a lot of the skills. It's called yelling, threatening, putting down, what to do instead. And so that comes with confident parenting. And then the third program is the program we've created for parents of Latino children. And it's called Los Niños Bien Educados, the well-behaved children, well-behaved in a social sense, not just an academic sense. So CICC, the Center for the Improvement of Child Caring, has three major programs, and they're all considered national models. And we've trained at least 8,000 instructors to run these programs in 40 states and the District of Columbia in different programs. But the ones that the program that has been the most widely used in, the, in this nation is the one for uh, African-American families, effective black parenting. Now, in creating these programs, they, they teach uh, some very specific skills, and we're going to talk about some of those, particularly the effective praise skill, how it's taught in different programs. But the big thing that we did, that we did in creating these programs for African-American and Latino parents is that we wanted to honor their heritage, their backgrounds. 
as African as people from Africa, Africa, and uh, we did that by using proverbs, the poetry of one's people, and for uh, the African American uh, families, we've used African proverbs. And I'm going to read you a few of those. Great. This is, and when we teach the skills or when we teach an idea, we always preface it with the use of an African proverb. So it nests it within the history of the people. And here are some of these. Famous, Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Some of these famous proverbs. Children are the reward of life. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is one that everyone knows. It takes a village to raise a child. Yes. Wow. And when we're, when we're t training uh, uh, instructors, as we trained you, we let you know that you should let people know that he who learns teaches. Yes. Another marvelous uh, proverb. Yes. And then when we teach the praise technique, which we're going to do a lot of in this, in this uh, program, there is a wonderful proverb that says, when the heart overflows, it comes out through the mouth. Yes. The heart overflows. It comes out through the mouth. One yes. of my favorite ones, by yes. the way, Dr. Dr. Yeah. Kirby is one of my favorite ones, Dr. Albee. <laughs> yeah, it, it is neat. And then the program wants parents to use really positive uh, disciplinary approaches. And uh, when we teach uh, uh, other ways of, of disciplining kids rather than uh, hitting or striking them, we use this African proverb. This is good. A, share, a shepherd does not strike his sheep. A shepherd mm -hmm. does not strike his sheep. Mm -hmm. Now, for the Latinos, we have sayings or dichos. Mm -hmm. These are their poetry from their people. And some of the Latino dichos, and I'm going to kind of mangle this because you know, <laughs> part of it's in English, part of it's in Espanol. But a donde el corazón se inclina el pie camina, which means where our heart leans, there our feet will follow. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we kind of introduced that in the program because it shows the parents that where their heart leans, it takes them somewhere. And they've taken this program because their heart leans towards their children. Mm -hmm. Then we have, when we teach them to observe their kids' behavior, uh, we teach that in all the programs and how to observe children's behavior. There's el ver es creer, to see is to believe. And then when we teach the praise method, which is the one we talked about in uh, African American, there, here's their here's their dicho, con azúcar y miel todo sale bien, which means with sugar and honey for a positive approach, everything comes out fine. <laughs> and then finally, um, uh, there's a, there are 50 of these dichos in the program. The one that we teach when we don't want parents to overdo commenting to their kids uh, or, or kind of lecturing them, we teach the more uh, better uh, approaches than lecturing to kids. The appropriate Latino dicho is al palabras nesia o dos sordos, which means nagging words fall on deaf ears. I'll say. <laughs> so th that these 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 dichos and proverbs bring parents into the context of this is a program for our people. This is a program for our people from our heritage. Now, with effective black parenting. Uh, it's, it's an, as you well know, it's an achievement orientation to raising black kids, not just to survive, but to achieve in this society. And we bring that out in the first session where we, we have something called the pyramid of success for black children. And we use the Im this image of a pyramid. We can show it a little maybe, but he'll read it so that you guys can all get it. But that's kind of what it looks like. And the reason that we're using a pyramid is we sit, share the idea of where does a pyramid come from? Where do you think of a pyramid coming from? And most people think of a pyramid coming from Egypt. Well, Egypt is in the continent of Africa. 
So the concept of a pyramid goes to one's heritage as a person of African descent. So what we ask in the parents in the first session is what are your goals for your child? What would you like him or her to achieve in this world? And these are the five life goals that the program says, this is, these are the main purposes for the program. And that's to help kids find good jobs, good education, loving relationships, helping the black community and resisting street pressures. Those are the life goals that, as you know, we bring it out from the parents in a call and response method. Like, what are our goals? We're running. What do we want our kids to be when they grow? Well, we want them to have good jobs. We want them to have loving. And then we put it in a, in a pyramid. And then we say, a lot of people say there isn't much that, that kids don't nor, nor get those things automatically. And we say, yeah, they do if they develop certain characteristics. They'll have a better chance at achieving those wonderful life goals if they have high self-esteem, if they have pride in their blackness, if they have self-discipline so they can control themselves rather than be uh, very angry at the things that are not so good in this world have healthy physical habits and good school skills and study habits. Those are the characteristics that will help the child receive, get those life goals. And some people say, well, there isn't much parents can do about that. You know, they're either going to have those characteristics or not. Well, we say, no, that's not true. There's a lot that you as a parent can do to help your kid develop those goals. And those goals, I mean, those things that you can do we call on the path to the pyramid of success. You're on the path to a pyramid of success with your children. If you model and teach love and understanding, and we describe what we mean by love and understanding. If you model and teach pride in blackness, pride in your heritage, and we describe that. If you model and teach self-discipline in your own behavior as a parent, if you model and teach good school habits and parents are in the class now. And so they're modeling and teaching that right now because they've gone to help themselves learn how to be a better parent. And then if they model and teach good health habits, and then we say, that's what the effective black parenting program is about teaching us how to model and teach love and understanding pride in blackness, self-discipline so that our kids will have a better chance at achieving those, getting those characteristics that are so important for achieving the life goals. That's what this program is about. And then we spend 15 sessions teaching the various skills and, and ideas that help parents build, stay on the path to the pyramid of success for black children. Now, staying on the path, uh, one of the things, as I've mentioned before, that we teach them to do to stay on the path is how to praise their kids effectively. And this is an example of, of uh, and you know this very well, because I'm sure you teach these things beautifully, that every skill that we teach in effective black parenting, and also the skills that are taught in Los Niños Bien Educados and Confident Parenting are always broken down into their component parts. And then the instructor describe, this explains why these are all part of, in this case, effective praise. And then he demonstrates them. And then the parents role play them. And here are the seven components of effective praise. Look at your child. It's very important that you've got the child's eye contact. Move close physically. Smile, have a pleasant expression say lots of nice things to the child, and then praise the kid's behavior, not the child, praise their behavior. Show physical affection, touch them, hug them, and then praise as quickly as possible when you've seen a behavior that you wanna see more of, that you wanna stimulate. So those are the seven components and the parents try them out and they role play them. And the, Parents can say what they want in terms of 
what do you say when you praise your kids? And for African Americans, there are there the program gives people the option of using expressions that may be more of an African American background, phonics expressions, or what are now called African American vernacular expressions. So here are some of the things that uh, some African American parents can say when they praise their kids. Yaz, yaz, expressing great pleasure or excitement. I really appreciate your routine of coming home, preparing your nutritious snacks, completing your homework before dinner time. You're showing good time management and responsibility for schoolwork and family time. Give me some dap. <laughs> okay. Another one. <laughs> another one is your fashion style is so fleek, extremely good, attractive, or stylish. You match the shirt perfectly with the shoes, jeans, and socks. Your sneaker game is on point. Bam! And then I'll fist them. Okay. Okay. So parents can, if they're, from, if they're comfortable with that, and many parents are, they use those, those expressions. Or they just use kind of the regular expressions. And that was terrific. I'm pleased. Good. Great. So the parents have a choice to use expressions that are more familiar with their with people in their neighborhood. And those expressions change over time, as you know. Ones that were used when we started this program in the 1970s, the type of expressions that were used, uh, they're kind of out of date, but we've updated them. And it's important to know that when you're dealing with the ex uh, vernacular expressions of a cultural group, they do change over time. And they change in different areas. And the South may be different than in the North or in one city or another city. So we kind of let people know that it, you can never be up to date because that's ever changing. So then another thing that I think is, is wise for us to bring in, because it's also in all three of the programs, is we teach a lot about family rules. Family life is really ruled governed behavior. We talk a certain way, we sit a certain way, we're, we're, we do things a certain way. And very few people think of them necessarily as family rules. But in our programs, we make a very big point about your family has a lot of rules and it's important to know what they are so you can emphasize the, the ones that are most important in your family. Now, there are rules for how you dress, there are rules for who speaks at different times. There are, there's, there are so many different types of family rules. And, there are fam and then there are family rules about public relations. How do you behave when you're outside of the family? And one that is very important, particularly for people of color, is get home safely rules. If the kids or youth are stopped by the police, what are they supposed to do? I mean, yeah. the goal is to get home safely. And we've used the 10 family rules from the Children's Defense Fund, which we teach as part of the program. And those 10 rules are as follows. Be polite and respectful when stopped by the police. Remember that your goal is to get home safely. Your goal is to get home safely. The second one, if you feel your rights have been violated, you and your parents have the right to file a formal complaint with a local police jurisdiction. Three, do not, under any circumstances, get in an argument with the police. Always remember that anything you say or do can be used against you in court. The fifth rule, keep your hands in plain sight. Make sure the police can see your hands at all times. Sixth, avoid physical contact with police officers. Do not make any sudden movements and keep your hands out of your pockets. Do not, do not, do not, do not run, even if you're afraid. Even if you believe you are innocent, do not resist arrest. If you are arrested, do make an, don't make any statements about the incident until you're able to get with a lawyer or a public defender. And finally, stay calm and remain in control. Watch your words, watch your body language, watch your emotions. Remember, 
your goal is to get home safely. And those oh, families. Now, yeah, um, yeah. May, may, may I ask this question? Because I, I, I yeah. on my other deal here, I see some parents asking questions is, and their question uh, is uh, what, let me see. She's saying, when you teach your children many of the things that you are discussing and the yeah. police officers decide that they are going to arrest them anyway, what other discourse do you have if you cannot afford a lawyer? Well, you can get a public defender. Yeah. You can get a public defender. Yeah. Once you're arrested, the, that, that has to happen. You have an option. So, but it, it, we actually ask the parents to put these rules on the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the family, you don't have to be, uh, you know, 10 years old to get stopped, you know, right. by the police. So these rules can be helpful for anybody in the community. And they're free on our website, uh, CICCparenting.org. You can go right and there's a little button at the top and you can download them for free. And it's also in, they're also in Spanish. Great. Yeah, we have English and Spanish versions. Okay. Yeah. She, she, she says, thank you. Listen, as as you're sharing, so let me cut for a second. Let's go to a question right quick, because mm -hmm. I, as, as I'm looking at, at some of my screens here, I, I love to always get this question out, especially when we're talking about parenting. And, and I'd like to ask you, because I, I had one mom say to me, you know, uh, most people think that only single parents have trouble with their children. So I want yeah. to ask this question. When you hear the word single parent, what is your professional vis visualization of said parent? Okay, well, there are different types of single parents. It could be a father or a mother who has the sole responsibility for raising the children. That, that's a single parent. You can be in a single parent home and have a relationship with each other, but not have responsibility for raising the kids in that home. Uh, the, the single parent kind of focuses on one person has more responsibility than others. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different types of single parent homes. Uh, and, and you know, uh, uh, Dr. Alvey, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's the biggest fa uh, family structure in the African American community, mm -hmm. single parent homes. There are more single parent homes in, in the African American community than in other communities. And that's a major reason that we have a whole section on the advantages of being a single parent and, and the difficulties. Okay. The program. Okay. Listen, I, I, I'm looking at a very interesting question here. The question is, uh, if, if, if the basic problem, and, and, and I, I know you didn't say this, Dr. Alvey, but this is what she's saying. If, if the basic problem sometimes appear to be single parents, what happens in households that have both parents? Both parents are gainfully employed and they're there with their children, but the child still turns out to be, quote, I'm going to use a lighter term because she was kind of angry, I guess, <laughs> turns out to be involved in criminal activity. Well, we say use, use the skills of the program. The program actually has uh, sets of skills where the kids can earn uh, uh, privileges by good behavior, There's the point system, they can earn points. There's there's a lot of skills in the program that will help parents diminish the problems that the kids are having. Now, I mean, we, what we really want them to do is take the program because it'll make it easier, even if you're having trouble with your kids. And a lot of parents get referred to this program because they are having trouble. There's yeah. also more more African-American parents get uh, reported for child abuse in this country than there are African-American parents. It's, list, it's around 12% African-American uh, families in this country and in most urban areas, including where our offices are in Los Angeles, there's usually about 30 or 40% of the families that are reported are African-American. So this is- May a I ask this question? And, and I'm, I'm so happy that you're sharing that with our audience. 
and okay. being be, being of African American descent and working with African American families, uh, you know, I I wonder if if we have, and I know this may not be in the book specifically, but if 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 there's information relative to the fact that African American parents are more in tune, you might say, to physical discipline as uh -huh. opposed to timeouts, and oh, yeah. with the way the laws are structured. Even if it's a spanking, if it's a, if it's taking something in a, a one hand uh, slap or whatever, uh, oh, okay. it, still, it still goes down as as uh, being quote a arrestable offense. Ooh, that's right. That's right. Uh -huh. That's why the program makes a very big. Uh, if that's a major part of the program, uh, uh, and we what we do in the program is we never bring it back to the history of, of African-Americans and the biggest history influence on the use of corporal punishment is slavery. And mm -hmm. One of the horrible uh, legacies of slavery is the idea that we must beat the black off our kids yeah, so, yeah, so that they don't get hurt by the masses. It goes way yeah. back. Yeah. And, and then it got reinforced through the Jim Crow laws. Yes. And, 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 and what's happening now, a very interesting thing is happening. More African-American authorities are coming up with, with uh, descriptions of how slavery has influenced family life. Yes. There's one a very fine uh, African-American woman who's written a book called, uh, what is the name of her book? The yeah. New Jim Crow? No, 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 no. Uh, oh, okay. Are you talking about Stacey? You're not talking no, about Stacey Patton is another one. Yeah. But uh, the post-traumatic slave syndrome. Yes. Post-traumatic yes. slave syndrome. Yes, yes. Shows how that has influenced relations between men and women, not only with kids and parents, but how it's related. It, it's, uh, it, it's created very unfortunate relationships in the African-American community. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of reason to do something very strongly, not to, to let the slavery issues become legacies in your home. Right. And taking a program like Effective Black Parenting is one of the best things you can do because it, it, it it's, it's right out there. How did this start? Why are we so enamored with using these these uh, harsh approaches with our kids, well, unfortunately, it has something to do with the unfortunate uh, legacy of having been enslaved in this country, yeah. in this continent. Yeah. But listen, on a more lighter note. Yes. <laughs> let's. I I see a very uh, compelling picture over your left shoulder, with you and former President Bill Clinton. Yes. Would, would you like to share with us uh, yeah. how that conversation came about and, and, and what was taking place? I mean, things that you might be comfortable sharing. Sure. Well, we, we and a lot of other people worked real hard to create a holiday to celebrate the status and importance of parents. It's called National Parents Day. Very few people know it exists. It's, it's actual, it's a holiday. And it's the fourth Sunday of July. Every year is National Parents Day. Well, when the legislation was uh, passed, they invited some organizations to meet, it was during the Clinton administration, to meet with him and with Hillary to celebrate the first National Parents Day. And that's where you see me uh, wow. holding hands or shaking hands with the president. So, and the reason they had me in there was mainly because of the Effective Black Parenting Program. Okay. It's helped, it's helped so many people of African-American uh, descent. So that's why you've got uh, Dr. <laughs> Alvey and Bill Clinton uh, memorialized. And behind the, even that, you have a, a great uh, affair we did with the Dodgers and the Angels. And in 1982, got this? <laughs> we did a campaign called the Hits That Prevent Child Abuse. 
Yeah, who gets the most hits in the months of June? Is it Steve Garvey or Rod Kavu? <laughs> Pick the one and you may win a prize. So anyway, that's that's this the one poster. here, the poster, the hits that prevent child abuse. So just some of our history. Uh, yes. But but you know, uh, uh, Dr. Alvey, I, I wanted I wanted our audience to to be able to hear firsthand from the individual being you, Dr. Alvey, that that was there, that's that's involved, that that was integral in many of these things happening and, and taking place. And the reason for that, to me, very simply, is many times we 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 see people on television, we read newspaper articles, magazines, etc. And we'd never get to hear from the individual. And I, I wanted to afford our audience the opportunity to hear from the great Dr. Kirby Alvey himself <laughs> as we uh-huh. share that. But listen, uh-huh. so so I want you to know that not only am I, but I, see, I'm, I'm looking at my other monitor and I'm getting some clapping hands for you. You, you can't see them, but I can. So I'm getting some, some clapping hands thank for you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, that, and that's great. And that's great. Listen, let me go back to one more question. There's about time for us to kind of start wrapping this up here. The argument continues as the world expresses this opinion as to whether women are capable of rearing successful, productive, psychologically well-adjusted boys or men. What are your thoughts? They are. Okay. They are. There, there's no doubt about that at all. And they'd be even more effective if they're using these skills, which are for men or women. Uh, women are, are, are infinitely capable uh, people and particularly capable parents. So uh, yeah. we love women. <laughs> oh, listen. You are getting a lot of these, Doc. They they're loving it. They're loving it. Now, the men may be a little jealous, but 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 the women are loving it. Some women are loving it. Uh, you know, I I, I lied. I do want to ask one more question. We're going to wrap this up. I know we we're getting into your time now. Some researchers agree that mothers may be the primary cause for some boys or men to experience uh-huh. gender identity challenges. Are you aware of any scientific studies that will verify or refute? these assertions you know as knowledgeable as you would hope for me to be i'm not aware of uh uh specific studies that i could share on such a lovely uh vehicle as this i'm just not uh, the 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 kids uh, the masculine masculine identity can be stimulated through obviously having the men in the home, but there are other men that are available to kids. There are, there are uncles, there are uh, uh, different um, groups, mentoring groups. There's so much that you, if you're a single woman parent, you can, you can uh, have your kids meet with other men. 100 black men, there's, there's so many different ways of getting boys in, in front of uh, pro-social men. Okay? <laughs> well, listen, again, you, you're getting a lot of hand claps here. So I, that, that, that's great. Listen, you have been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guest. And I not want to be greedy and, and take up all your time. Uh, uh, Ms. Sharon Benson, you have been fantastic helping us through this entire process. Uh, I, I have to Thank say to both of you, that this has clearly been a joy and we'll have to do it again. And uh, uh, we, we, we will talk about some more things, but I do have, I don't have any more questions, but one parent says, her name is Carla. Carla is I'm, on, on my monitor. Carla is asking, I'm trying to read this. <laughs> Carla is asking when her question is, when you discuss black parenting and you are not, a black person, do you yes. ever have parents? No, no, it's just what she's asking. Do you ever have parents to get upset? That's yes. the question. <laughs> like, what's a white guy I was having to say yeah. about raising black kids? Well, this white guy <laughs> works with some of the top African American scholars and work social workers and psychologists. I'm I'm kind of like the one who made it happen. 
but I'm the only white person that was involved in creating this program. And out of the, I think it's 6,000 African American, 6,000 instructors, there's only a couple of other white people that are grounded enough <laughs> to speak the truth. Yes. And, uh, but it's always been an issue. It's always been in what's a white guy doing in the middle of this. There's a great article that the LA Times did called The Education of Kirby Alvin. And it's in a lot of our books uh, with just that issue. What is this person doing? And when we created the program with Dr. Charles Thomas, the father of black psychology, and Hector Myers from UCLA, they were the people that made the big decisions about what should be in the program. Uh, I mean, I'm, a, I'm scholarly, but I'm not from the culture. So we had to look at what should we include in the program? You've got to include racism in there. You've got to include the areas of, a, of a, the impact of slavery. You've got to include pride in one's blackness. Mm -hmm. All of this, I took it and worked with African-Americans from all over the country to put together this program. Yeah. So I'm kind of a, a, kind of a mover and shaker but I'm, the, I'm actually the only major Afro white person involved in creating Effect of Black Parent. That's great. And I'm proud of it. Yeah. That's great. Uh, uh, Carla, Carla is on yeah. fire here, Dr. Dr. Uh, oh, Alvin. Carla is on fire. She, 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 she is saying bravo. And she, she's asking, do you see any major difference be differences in black parents and white parents when it comes to rearing their children? Thank you, yes. Carla, for that question. Oh, yeah. And, and the issue is the context. I mean, the context here is how black people got to this country, how they were treated from the minute they got here, from the Middle Passage, and how that has had an influence on everything mm -hmm. about trying to adjust to this with this world. And that's those are the big differences. The kids go through the same stages of development. There's a lot of things that are similar, but there are some big differences. And in creating this program, we kind of said, look, these differences are important. Mm -hmm. And uh, here they are. Wow. So, well, you're getting a lot uh, of hearts. You're getting a lot of hearts going up and a, a lot of hand claps. So listen, I guess that is a great, great, great way to sum this thing up. So Dr. Alvey, Yes, yes, like, yes. Please, if, if you would share with our audience how they may contact you. And after you finish, uh, we would also like to give, uh, I'm, I'm going to call Sharon doctor anyway. We, we'd like to give Dr. Benson, ah. <laughs> we'd like to give Dr. Benson the opportunity as well to tell us how we might contact her. But right now, we're going to go with uh, Dr. Alvey. Well, there's a website for the organization and for the Center for the Improvement of Child Caring. It's www. CICCparenting.org, CICCparenting.org. And that's a website that tells about all of our programs and has the, uh, the, the has everything on it. And we created another website that's just for the Effective Black Parenting Program. And that's www.AfricanAmericanParenting.org. AfricanAmericanParenting.org. And that's a website that's about the history of the program, how we created it, the research that supports it. That's the website for that program. The website for CICC, CICCParenting.org. And the phone number is 818-358-4858. And there's one more website. Dr. Alvey.org, which shows all the things that Dr. Alvey has published throughout the years, and they're linked to everything. So, Dr. Alvey.org as well. Thank you. Okay, That's guys. You I, am, I, am, I am listing all of this in the, in the window below, and I'm, I'm going to get it to our other audiences here, and, and I'll make sure they get that information. Uh, Sharon, would, would you like to share with us? Or would you like to? Uh, tell, give the people about a minute clip uh, of, of, of just well, I just want to say the thing that I kind of wanted to say with regard to when you were talking about 
the um, effect uh, the effective black parenting program and and him being white it started as new confident and then it got so important that it had to break into parts right so well, what we did is we we had created a national model for training mental health workers to be parenting instructors mm -hmm. and one of the programs we used was confident parenting then i was asked by the Minority Mental Health Center at the National Institute of Mental Health to go to the South where there was a big conference on mental health services for blacks in the South. And that's where I met Jim Ralph, a black psychiatrist from the National Institute of Mental Health. And I told Jim, listen, we've got this program where we're training instructors, but the programs are not sensitive to the black experience. Okay. We need to adapt these programs, not just for black folks, but for brown folks too. And he said, Dr. Alvey, when you get back to LA, meet with the people at Martin Luther King the Hospital, Charles Drew Medical Center, and come up with a proposal of how you go about finding out how to adapt these programs for blacks and Latinos. And we met with all the people here in LA, uh, African Americans and Latinos, and we all went together and submitted a proposal to the National Institute of Mental Health. And it was reviewed by a review committee made up of all people of color. Very unusual. They were making the decision. Okay. And decided to fund our program. Wow. And that's how effective black parenting got started. Wow, excellent. So, and I'm just here to support him. Okay. I'm just here to support him, be his creative director and help him achieve all his goals and help to make a positive difference in this world. Excellent. That's it. Excellent. Well, listen, let me say to Dr. Alvey, it has certainly been a pleasure and, and you have uh, hand claps and hearts going up all over the place. Uh, you, you've, you've, you've certainly been a hit. And Sharon, we, we certainly thank you for being here uh, with us and helping to support. And I just want to share with the audience a little bit. If you would like to contact me, uh, check out www dyingonmyfeet.com. Once you get to that site, you will find all of my social media links right there. Just click on those links and you can find me there. Uh, I would like to say as well, I am a partner with CICC. I did my training uh, with Dr. Yeah. Alvey's program back 2007. So it has been quite some time. It's an excellent, excellent program. Dr. Alvey, uh, wow, this is, this is just a fantastic uh, fantastic work that you are doing. And I'm just saying to our audience, it's a fantastic work that Dr. Alvey is doing. And it's just, it's, it's super. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to go to Dr. Alvey's website and to look at his information, go to the YouTube channels and uh, subscribe to those channels. And I'd like to ask all of you as well to uh, take the program, you know, to, uh, uh, take the classes get 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 you some some uh first-hand information so that you can go back and, and share with your communities your civic organizations uh your schools etc and make sure you help so without further ado it's, it's been great we're very happy to have each and every one of you here on the nobody asked me guy show we invite yeah. you to add to come back with us next week uh, right now we have scheduled dr george mckenna the third and uh, if you get time, go to your YouTube channel. You'll see Dr. George McKenna. Uh, Denzel Washington played his character in the George McKenna story. And we'll be talking about education. And I'm proud to share with everyone, uh, I did a lot of my work under Dr. McKenna. I sat at the feet of the guru. So uh, do, do, do us a favor, come back next week. Uh, Dr. McKenna may not be able to be with us, but he said it was okay to go ahead and announce it. So I'm announcing it. <laughs> we expect to have him here next week. And if he's not, uh, I'm sure we will we will find a, a, a someone that you that you would enjoy listening to. So listen, it's been great. That nobody asked to me, guy. And I'm a writer, publisher, author. I don't I'll do my own publishing. Let me let me back up. I'm not a publisher because I don't do public public publishing. However, uh, as as Dr. Alvin has talked to you about parenting, we have written a book called Mothers and Their Smith, an introspective view look at mothers rearing their sons. Now, understand this. Dr. Alvey, Alvey is going to share with you some more information. He's going to show you his book, but I, I, I must share with you. Mothers and their men, 
an introspective look at mothers rearing their sons talks about mothers, sons, parenting, lack of uh, maybe some things dads can do, et cetera. So I can, I can with very much confidence say to you, Dr. Alvey is the man. You need to yeah. read his books. You need to take the seminar. Can we say on our website, parentingerrors.com? Okay. Parenting errors was another thing that's a, a wonderful thing. Another website and another one of a book that he did that's for the world and Father's Days on Sunday. I encourage you if you're looking for some a little present, go to parentingerrors.com and uh, check out Parenting Errors. Fantastic. How to overcome them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, guys. It, How to solve them. Yeah. How to solve. All right. It, it's been great. And when we thank artists for being here and uh, we appreciate you guys very much. Come back and join us next Friday, seven o'clock PM central standard time. That's the nobody asked me guys show. Have a blessed yeah. evening. You do a great job. Thank you. Peace and love.